All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to actually create or get wireframe to display in V-Ray. Now, there's not a lot of tutorials online that show you how to do that, um, but I'll show you here in a video, and then you can actually have it ready to go. So what we're going to do here, I'm in 2013, but this works the same with 2014 and 15 V-Ray. So what I'll do is I'll go in here, and I'll go to my uh, Windows. Let's go to our Render Editors. We're going to pull up our Hypershade. And you'll see we have V-Ray active. I'm going to temporarily go to the 2D texture node. I'm going to pull in a V-Ray edges node. Just click on it and have that guy come up. And then I'm also going to uh, create a V-Ray. If we go back to our, our Maya node here, we're going to create a V-Ray material and have that also in our scene. So let's say you got all your other renders out, all your other renders laid out, everything's good to go. What we're going to do is select all of our stuff here. We have like our material render already set up, but now we want to show off our wireframe. I'll get my V-Ray material and I'll just drag it onto my objects here, so all of them have that material. And then I'm going to select that material and we'll go into our attribute editor, pull that guy up. And I want to be able to actually get my V-Ray edges to be able to display on this material. So to be able to do that, I'm going to go in here and grab him, middle mouse drag, and take him to my diffuse color. Now you'll see it automatically show up, which is kind of cool. You'll see the V-Ray um, edges show up. But we can now control the color background, as well as we can tr control the pixels of the lines right here. So if we render this temporarily here, let's do a quick render. Set this to V-Ray. Let me minimize my window, it's a little too big. And I'll render this guy. He's probably at a really goofy um, amount here. Let's actually change our render size. We'll go full resolution. It's at 50%. And then we'll change our resolution to the standard not the TV that your grandma has type of standard. We'll change that to uh, like a 1024 or 720. Did I say 1024? I did. We'll do 720 here. And then we'll put that same material on a couple of these guys. So I'll just middle mouse drag them to these objects. You can see this in play. You know, remember when you're using V-Ray, you have to make sure, you should all know this. This is, uh, I'm assuming some of you guys know this. But for those that do not, if we pull up our render editor, you want to make sure that you have your V-Ray active. So in other words, you want to turn on your global illumination when you bring in a light. So if you bring in a light, all of a sudden it will be black. So you make sure you turn that on to be able to activate it. Because the way the V-Ray works, it's actually very powerful. It tries to do realistic lighting. And logically, you'll have to turn the lights on, and this will allow light to bounce off your surfaces. So just keep that in mind. I'm not going to get into any of the rendering properties here, but for those that are fairly new to V-Ray, um, those are things you have to understand. So if you start putting lights in here on your wireframe and you're noticing things aren't coming up, then that would be the main culprit. That's the problem. If there's other issues, then I didn't know. You can always post in the group if you have any questions, and I'll try to get them as soon as possible. Now these guys will be a little bit tight because they're very dense for being small. I probably could have made them a little bit smaller, but it's all cool. There we go. So now when we render, we'll actually see all these guys with the wireframe on. Pretty nice. Look at that with the default lighting. It does a pretty darn good job. So all we did was set up the, the lines and get it going. So if we need to make it thinner, we can do so. And black's actually pretty decent. But if I wanted to change the color, I can change that to blue. We'll see what that looks like. It's not going to be great, but you'll get an idea of what the control that you have. Blue! There we go. Oh my gosh, it's puke blue. I don't even know if that was a color or not. But you can see the strength of the control that you have. And then over here, we have the pixel size. So if we need, I put it back to black. So if we need to make this a little bit smaller, we can. And then we'll render that. Now be careful. The more dense your meshes are and the smaller your lines are, you can get some flickering in your video. So just keep that in mind. You want to avoid that flickering. Basically, it's video trying to sort out between the black and the white and doesn't know what to draw first. This happens sometimes in video games, too. In moray patterns, you'll see that sometimes when you're watching a TV show and then they have a particular type of roof or pattern and you'll see like a moray start to blend together. It's video sorting issues and you just got to be careful with it. 
All right, that's about it. It's really that easy. Mm -hmm. Probably one of the shortest videos I've done in a while. And cool. Hope that helps you guys out.